Hey guys, welcome back to my YouTube channel. So as promised, this is a teaser for the Cape Chemistry Unit 2 classes. There's still space, so you can join. Contact me. Okay, I'm going to skip. Got it, got it. Right. So the question reads, a treatment of 0 0.800 grams of a sample of impure potassium chloride with excess aqueous silver nitrate resulted in, a precip in the precipitation of 1.460 grams of silver chloride. Calculate the percentage of potassium chloride in the sample. Okay, and also, this is what you try to extend to be able to let me just think of mine. Alright, so first thing we're going to do is we're going to make up a big one over here, our equation, right? So it's going to be K, oh, KCL plus um, AgNO3 is when it's going. This is going to be a double displacement reaction. Oh, okay. KCl plus plus AgNO3. Mm -hmm. This is going to be a double displacement reaction. So we're going to form KNO3 yep. plus um, AgCl. Very good. No, we can put in we 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 know say um we, we got zero point eight grams of potassium chloride. So zero point eight potassium grams. chloride, miss. Yeah, potassium You're forgetting chloride. a very important word. Impure potassium chloride? Yeah. So what does that mean? It means that it's not completely potassium chloride, it has other stuff in it. Repeat it. It means it's not completely potassium chloride, it has other stuff in it, like impurities. Very good. So that is why we couldn't use the, the mass of potassium chloride, the sample here, to find out the the percentage of potassium chloride in the sample. Well, if it were only but potassium were chloride, it would note? be... Yes, this is exactly what I was telling you in the in the voice note. If uh, if it were in fact pure potassium chloride, that would mean that zero point eight zero zero grams of the sample were um would be potassium chloride, which would mean that the the percentage of potassium chloride would be one hundred percent. Yeah. Right. Yeah. Well, seeing that, that that's, that's not that's true. true. Mm -hmm. Seeing that that's not true, we don't know how, what is, like what mass of potassium chloride is in this zero point eight zero zero grams of the sample, right? What's the quantum polarity chemistry? Repeat that. What's the quantum polarity chemistry? What What is the requirement to teach chemistry? Um, what's that's what you asked me. No, Mister West, we can't employ if we can't teach. If we can't teach chemistry. Oh, oh, have I ever said that? Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, I don't think they would employ me. Well, they, they, they employ, they ain't done that before. Why they won't employ you? I don't know. I don't know. I, 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 I don't think. They're not getting good kids. 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 You're forgetting that I go to school in the days, miss. After, right? After, yep. after, after, after. after well, you guys have a chemistry teacher, so you don't need one. Come here. Don't, 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 don't even, don't say anything. You're very good. Oh, yeah, we're not saying nothing. Yes, please. That's why I said, come you. I said, after, come you. After, after. Oh my god, I don't want to hear this story. Okay. <laughs> Remember your teacher Mark your loves. <laughs> Just a reminder. <laughs> don't say anything you don't want them to hear. Come here. It's always yeah, a kind, bad. it's always a gentle. I would reminder. just say that after your after your time at uni, you could like look into applying for a job. That's what I meant. Oh, I oh that's <laughs> oh, that's what you meant. Okay, great. Thank you for clarifying. <laughs> I had to clarify myself. That's what I meant by saying after, honestly. Oh, great. Because I, 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 like, <laughs> I, yeah. 
I always tell you people that you know, just a gentle reminder. Remember your teachers, mark your labs, and your SBAs. <laughs> <laughs> they contribute to your final grade. Honestly, like listen, no, I was I wasn't trying to say anything bad about teacher. I don't have I don't I don't say anything bad about the teacher, the current child. I don't I don't have anything bad to say about her. Honestly, that's great. I don't have anything bad to say about her. I know. That's great. At least, <laughs> at least, like at least. You guys got a great one this year. <clears throat> so, impure, impure, impure. Where were we? You know, we need to stop doing this whole sidetrack thing. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> Sorry, we can't do it, it like goes over there. the time. It yes. was for two hours and them thing there, and <laughs> that's kind of harsh for you yeah. and for everyone else. But let's continue. So KCL, we have that. <clears throat> so yeah, I was saying that, my God, give me a second. Okay. Okay, great. I just needed to cough. So I was telling you that 0 0.0880 grams of the sample, we aren't sure how, 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 what the mass of potassium chloride in the sample was, right? The only thing we're yeah. indeed sure about from that sample given that the mass of potassium chloride in it is less than 0 0.08 grams. That's true because they did, they did specify that it's impure. So, yeah. Yeah. So, we reacted the sample with excess silver nitrate and we got, would get potassium nitrate and silver chloride, right? Mm -hmm. So as I was saying earlier, since, since we're going over the question that you missed last week because you were absent, so we went over that first, telling you that based on the law of proportion, whatever, yeah, whatever mass you get on the, the what? The reactant side, that would be equal to the mass on the product side, right? Yeah, on the reagent side, because of the law of proportions, everything is equal to one another. Yeah. yeah. So that would mean that Whatever chloride ions you get on the left, you'll have to get that amount of chloride ions on the right, right? Given this that, is with, this bit, this, assuming this that, done. assuming that all the chlor, all the chlor, all the chloride ions reacted in the reaction, right? Yeah, that's that's an input excess because they're they're hoping that all of them would react. Very good. All right, great. So okay. that means Watching that. Watching YouTube videos on on labs do teach me one thing. Please, I'm having progress. <laughs> so based on what we need to find out we basically need to find out um how much potassium chloride we have but what we don't know is what we do know is how much agcl we have and this chloride ions there would be what the chloride ions are common right that's true for ions are common. So when we when you, so basically from the get go when we are able to calculate the number of moles that would be in silver chloride, we could use a lot of proportions to um we could use a lot of the, the, the law of the, um law of proportions and we could basically dissociate the KCL from each from from it from itself or well it or K plus plus C L minus and then you know, we can basically do a whole proportional relationship. Very good. So yeah. whoa, that was whoa. Yeah actually whoa okay. You go <laughs> I just said that we can apply the, the law of proportions out throughout the whole something. Yes I told you that that that, that it's a fact well, fact till somebody disprove it a couple of years from now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> fact until until the I, I hope they disprove it after the work because you just hurt me so yeah, so we know that this is one point four zero grams for six zero grams of silver chloride, right? Uh -huh. So work out the number of moles and tell me that please. That's true. Let me just because I mean I'm, I'm writing my notebook and I want and I want to go back to to review, even though me, even though it's never recording, but sometimes I have the website and all the funny stuff there. So yes, I write down to make sure it's me happy. Okay, now. 
that is it again from you. Me can we can use one hundred eight grams if um for something there. Just be like um silver, silver. You know I don't remember this, and I use it so often. One hundred and eight, or I can use one hundred. I've been I've been using one hundred and seven. What what was that? It's actually one hundred and eight or one hundred and seven point nine. Here. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, because every time I do it, every time I do it, every time I always I always use it like that, but every time I do it, me, me use um chlor chlor chlorine to what four spoons we can figure so means everybody know chlorine is dead thirty five point five. Well thirty five point four something something something. But you can use thirty five point five. Yeah. But me like me like when they equal to me like me like use for if me if me use fourteen we can't figure so silver me use fourteen we can't figure so chlorine. Whatever like sells your boat, Owen. Whatever sells your boat. <laughs> whatever <laughs> sells that. Come here, tired of me. Come here, tired of me. Okay. I hope nobody hears me. <laughs> All right, so yes, please don't. All right, we're so we're so tired. Answer here, It's going to be one point four six zero divided by one four three point three five. That means that the three six we can figure is it is what there are zero point zero one zero two moles in one point four six zero grams of silver chloride. Wait, all right. How many moles? Therefore, there are zero point zero one zero two moles in one point four six zero grams of silver chloride. So one mole is equal to how much? One one forty three, I think. One forty three point three. I don't know. Yes, one 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 forty three point three five. According to my according to my information, it would be that three five grams. Mm? One three five grams. Yeah, yeah. One mole would be equal to one four three one four three point three five grams, and then x mole would be equal to one point. Four six zero grams. You did cross. You did you did cross proportional for something, and you will get that zero point zero one zero two moles are in what one point four six zero grams of silver chloride. Grams over um times x basically. So you divide everything by one forty three point three five grams, right? Come here, really, lawyer. Yeah, I wasn't talking to you, but. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. Fair enough. Um, so we got zero point zero one two one zero two, right? Mm -hmm. Forgive me, I'm going to check it because the last time yeah. you did a you yeah. did you did a you would let's just say mm -hmm. that subtraction yeah. wasn't subtraction. Yes. Yeah, check it. May not have no problem with checking. Check it. Yeah, it's correct. Very good. So what you do we know now? When you check it. We're going to basically use a lot of proportions. So we're going to use a lot of proportions and we're going to basically use yeah, may, may I make up may I make up a statement? May I make up? There's something in law of constant proportions. So we're going to use a lot of constant proportions to use the um the number, the 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 number, the moles and mass of what, of um of chloride of chloride ions in what KCl. That's what we're going to be doing right now. No, we we are currently aware that on the what's that word on the product side we have zero point zero one zero two moles of chloride ions so that must mean that we have 0 0.0102 moles of chloride ions on the on the radiating side very good so that would tell us that we have how many moles of how many moles of 
close. Since everything must wrap in a one to one more ratio because you know one with an in front, one imaginary one in, a, in front of the cables and one imaginary one. It's still, it's still not supposed to, it's still supposed to be minus. So you can't see a minus. Oh, yeah, one minus, yeah. very good. So be Z. Great, very good. Mm, that's okay, yeah, man. And then now it would also be. 0 0.0102 moles so everything are right now are one to one more, which are trying to be react according to the equation that we have for the for the, for the dissolution of case here very good so that would mean that we have 0 0.0102 moles of kcl correct that's true all right so tell me what are we going to find out next all right now, since we have this information, we are now able to calculate the number, the, 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 um, the, we are able to calculate the mass of KCLs using 0 0.012 moles. Then now we can, that then now when we calculate that, we're going to be able to deduce that this would be the, this would be the, um, the peer sample of KCL that was actually produced in the reaction. All right? Exactly. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Owen. Like you're on a roll tonight. You're on a roll. Like, <laughs> God, I, I am not good. I am not good at problem solving, but me think me, me think me good with using like facts and something to, to make up statements and something to help me. It's still problem solving, miss. You're solving well, you problem. All right, let's not call it problem solving then. Let's say using facts and statements to figure out. <laughs> come here. Right, come here. Okay, come here. Okay, come here. Okay, come here. Let's rip it like right that. Like, bro. My God. Okay. <laughs> well, you're Bring on a roll. Bring up your periodic table. Papa boy. Yes, sure. we're in a row together with each other. Yes, we're in a row. We're doing this together, Cam. Together. Table. Which, which element do you want information on? Okay. Papa boy. I'm going to see what I'm going to use it to. Potassium. Yes, K. Potassium. I'm going to use 39 and... Yeah. I think you like okay. using complex numbers. I don't I don't understand you know. Thirty nine point one. Me tell us that me and you switch it to configure it with what me want. Me want to be fair. Right. I think you find the work more fun when the numbers are more complex. And I don't know why. <laughs> For real. I, I noticed that with you. You, you. you don't have fun doing it unless the numbers are complex. So my terms are very really complex. So probably tablet like that's why. I mean, I think I that them didn't mean, but all right. <laughs> <laughs> you finished with this? Yes, I'm finished. They I've I've deduced that one mole of KCL is equal to 74.6 grams. So I'm not going to calculate the number of the, the grams that is in 0, 0.0. One equal to how many grams? Seventy six point what? Six six seventy six point four grams. Okay, And thus zero point zero one zero two moles is equal to how many grams? Let's do that right. Now I'm going to I'm going to do my cross multiplication thingy thingy. Okay, right. So it's going to be seventy four. It's going to be seventy four point six times. They said you told me 76.4, miss. Yeah. 76. 74.6, sorry. I'm sorry, I told you the wrong thing. 74. I probably me here, wrong thing. Never mind. Yeah. So it's 74.6? Okay. Yeah. No problem. It's going to be 74.6 times 0 0.0102 moles. And that is going to give me the three significant figures. Um, zero point seven six one. So that means that in zero point um zero one two moles, there are zero point seven six one grams. Very good. So that's how many? That's the pure sample of KCL, right? Yeah, and it's and it's less than. And you know, say so if you run it, if you run it up, you could get like eight, but we're not gonna do that. And uh, no. <laughs> <laughs> uh, so the sample itself, the impure sample, zero point eight zero zero. All right, let me write that down. The pure sample was zero point eight zero zero grams, right? The impure sample. That's true. However, oh, we are not. 
yeah continue okay. You do the talking. You go on. Go on ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> yeah, there's all right. In in the question, we're giving the impure sample of KCL to measure to be to be measures the zero point eight zero zero grams. So if we just calculated that we have we have just deduced that there are it's the actual pure sample of KCL would be zero point seven six one grams. All right. And the question, what did the question want us to find? They want us to find the percentage of potassium chloride in the sample. How would you do that? That's a very important question. All right. All right. That would mean that we would are uh, normally we normally when we have percentage, and I just like say we get it, we, we know we know them we know the numbers and put it over the total amount and then times it by one hundred. So would it be correct for me to say that I would just say thirty nine over Point no, but that will be a less. So some owner, some owner right there. So Owen. Mm -hmm. All right. Let's say you got a test, right? Yeah. Let's say the test had one hundred. Had you got one hundred and twenty marks to get on that test, right? They get one hundred and twenty yeah, marks. They get one hundred percent, right? That's not true. Yeah, yeah. Let's say you only got sixty marks. What percentage did you get? Yeah, oh, when you go and box yourself when you get the answer here, you know. You know. Yeah, yeah, me think I treat this question like a hard question. How much percent? 72%. Yeah, sure. 120 marks. So you get 60 marks out of 120, Owen. No, I'm it wrong. Oh, and how you find percentage? Me, me, ah, fifty percent. No, me, I tell, let me tell you what I did. I, I, me, 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 me think that my mind, me ignore say yes, yes, say one hundred twenty. With the total mind, I mean just say one hundred, and then me, me times it by so me was supposed to times it by. Oh, wait, me never listen to you, sir. Me just say oh because oh, I was. <laughs> <laughs> I said that I I did I, I neglected the part. Oh, you know you know like in you know like when somebody says say one thing but you hear something else you say one twenty but me hear me hear one hundred so many times the bias not women was supposed to times the bias that's why I get the wrong answer. Uh, oh 60, okay. Yes, yeah, so sixty half a uh, half a sixty half a sixty or one twenty, so I will have fifty percent. Yeah. All that. right. Another question for you now. How did you calculate the percentage for that test? I simply put 60 over 120 and times it by 100. All right, so that means that you put the marks you got over the total times it by 100, right? Yeah. So how do you get the percentage KCL in the sample? All right. Oh, I'm done, Sina. Me really done. Me so <laughs> done. I'm so done. I'm so done. I would simply put zero point zero one zero two over zero. No, we can't mm -hmm. do that nine. That grams. Me have put me have put me in a like in a like terms. I mean, what what like? So. Hint hint. You just work out the mass of KCL. <laughs> Why you think I work out the mass of KCL, Owen? You think I just for sure? You're supposed to use it. Huh? You're supposed to use it. Don't tell me. Just, me, not, me not, I know it's going to be. Me not, it's, going to be it's going to be a denominator for work, but my effort. I numerate my effort. Wait, wait, wait. You're breaking up. W what would be the denominator? We already know, so we have multiplied by one. would be zero point seven six one. Why? Yeah, we know that for sure. Why? The denominator would be why? Yes. Why? It's because it's the to it's the pure it's the pure mass of KCL. So that and remember, we're trying to find out the mass, the the percentage of KCL in the sample. What is the sample? The sample, yes, it's not the impure sample. The impure sample, the impure sample you want, 
Yeah, the, the impure sample, what, the mass of the impure sample is KCL, the pure KCL and something else, right? Yeah. And we want to know the percentage of the sample that is KCL. You understanding me? Wait, Mr. Yeah, yeah so, so wait, you are saying that in the original question, we got that the impure sample measured 0.8 grams, right? Wait. However, oh, when we mm -hmm. yes, that's true. The oh, impure ever, sample. When we, but when we did our calculations, we we, we we calculated that or we did use that the actual the actual pure sample of KCL would be zero point seven six one grams, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. No. So if uh, me, yeah, you yeah, you yeah, agree with me, said the data be um point seven six one? Nope. All right, that means there's something just around. You know, all you need to do is relate this to normal percentages that you do. You know how to work out percentage. I'm sure you know how to work out percentages. Yeah. Mm -hmm. When you're trying to find the percentage of something, right? Yeah. All right, let's do a little bit of fractions. Let's go back to the basics, right? Mm. All right, let's say you have a whole piece pizza, right? I use pizza because I like food. <laughs> <gasps> All right, yeah. let's say pizza. Let's say we slice it in four. Let's say we slice it in four, right? Yes. Let's say you give your your sister a quarter and you give you your mommy a quarter. She right? won't get too much. You Doesn't matter. Much, but okay. You're being kind today. <laughs> I'm going to give her a quarter. <laughs> How much? How much are the pizza gone? Yes, please. half a pizza gone. Very good. So, what percentage of the pizza gone? Fifty percent of the pizza gone. Very good. How? How? Tell me now. Tell me now. Give me an equation that will tell you how much of the pizza gone. My one equation. How much of the pizza gone? Yeah. What percentage of the pizza? Was was given away basically. Fifty percent of the pizza was given away. Yeah, tell me now that you know what equation where could I work? Use for work that out and prove say fifty percent. Like you want a harder question, come here. Cause I want to work. You mean by a harder question? Like like things that like, make you apply straight in my head. Me no know give an equation for that. Me literally can't tell us say a fifty percent that pizza I will go away because I that I go go away. Oh, your work out 50%, miss? You, 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 must... you, 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 you go put, you, you are going, all right, since it's two quarters, you're going to add up two quarters, so quarter plus a quarter. Then quarter no, a quarter. Yeah, that will give you literally a half. Huh? Very good. Yeah, a quarter uh -huh. plus a, yeah that, that, that's going to give you a half. Because that's what it adds up to. Then no, the question saying must work. You're going to want it. You're going to want it. Very good, yeah. Mm -hmm. So you're going to then multiply. You're this. going to multiply the half by one hundred. You're going to plot the multiply that by a hundred because that's how you work out percentages. Because percentages out of a hundred, that's how you work, and you will get fifty percent. All right. So we we started out with 50%. two out of four, right? Meaning two slices that's of the true. pizza gone out of four slices. Yeah, four 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 into one hundred. You got twenty five. At uh, twenty five. Five slow, your roll, slow your roll, so slow your roll, slow your roll, slow down, yeah. slow down. Yes, ma'am. Slow yes, down. Ma yes, ma'am. I want you to get a point, and you're running away from the point. That's why I need you to stop. Okay. Okay, the point this was... This four here represents the sample, the total pizza. Oh, uh-huh. Two out of four was given away. Oh. That is exactly. So when I asked, you know, what percentage of the pizza did you give away? You literally gave away two slices from the entire four. Yes, that's true. And multiplied that by 100. Mm -hmm. Applying this to the 
If the I'm the post that was to even our a current question, I mean, if I'm the post applies to our current question, the denominator would be 0 0.8 and our numerator would be 0 0.761 times by 1 times by 100. Why? Why? Because as, as you say, you start off, you start off with the total, you start off with a whole, and the whole would have been 0 0.8, 0 0.8 grams. And then you now we do our calculations and we deduce that the KCL in the sample would be the 0 0.761 grams. And then you now we, we would use that, we would use that value in order to calculate the percentage because we're basically working out a part from a whole, from a whole, from a whole. That's a percentage word. You are literally taking exactly. a part of a whole. If you're taking a part of a whole and then multiply it by a 100 to see what is the, what, what percent they are using. Because what percent, percent literally means per 100, right? Yeah, yeah, percent, yeah, percent. Very good. So you got that point. Great. You know, you, you know why you know why we never said 0 0.761 because it's because I wasn't thinking to use the, the impure sample again. I just thought that. The impure sample wouldn't be used anymore. It was, it was just supposed to work with the, the, um, the, the, the pure sample. So, yeah, so basically the 0 0.80 represents the whole pizza before you decided to be a good Samaritan and give away a whole half of it. When did it ever come? <laughs> Can you not today? Not today, please? Yeah, not today, honestly. Not today. And the 0 0.761 grams represents the basically the sample that remains or the KCL that maybe you want to give away the pure KCL or you want to keep it, whatever, that's just a part of it, right? So 0 0.716 represents the pure KCL and whatever is left represents the impure substance that's left, right? Whatever that's else true. made the substance impure, right? That's the truth. So in order to get what percentage of it was pure KCL, you have to divide KCL by the total number of the sample, right? Mm -hmm. And multiply that by 100. So tell me what you get when you do that. We're going to get, um, to see if we can figure it's 91.1%, but I think people have whole numbers is 95%. 90 what point, what percent? 95%. 95.1 point... 95.1 95.1 okay 95.1 very good so um if you're going to round it to the nearest whole number put the squiggly thing what that the squiggly I, yes mr gabby don't tell me this he said i always make you one point that you if you make so if you get one along this small number write it all out then put that squiggly thing and put it three to two to two to three six feet yeah you it literally means one? approximately yeah, est estimately. Yes. So, yeah, very good. So that's what I got. Yeah, I feel content in my antenna. That's great. So we're going to give it a rest and we're going to come again on another day. I mean, if we start today, I want different. I want next day nine week. I don't know it depends on how my week is like november is a packed week for me um i will be more free during december so we're not gonna have no more classes again not until saturday I, okay, that's what i'm so saying it depends on how how free i am of course okay. yeah i have, have classes on saturday that's a must mm -hmm. that's a must so like, you remember the titration question, let me show you. Let me show you working out for it. Like, I don't remember how many people can't answer to it. You know, I don't remember that word. Yeah, come. Let me stop this recording. Yeah. So, yeah. I should do an outro, should I? Like, all right, guys. Let's do the outro. Let me do the outro. All right. So, this was only a part of the class. Of course, I'm going to be doing more stuff that you know i have to do with the actual class and again the class is six thousand dollars for the month if you want to join their still space you'll get access to the full package that includes practice questions basically coaching from me on how to um, do your entire exam you know how to complete the entire paper as well as how to approach answering questions and such also if you want to contact me my contact information you're not following me on Instagram, go follow me at both 
young underscore genius the official and on my personal page at uh, underscore cam underscore eo my name is camille by the way yes my number my number my telephone number you can always whatsapp me call or text at 876-501-1966 even though i prefer you to message me i won't mind if you call i'm happy to talk to you or you could shoot me an email at younggenius.educate at gmail.com and let me work out a price for you. So until next week, guys, every Sunday at 5.30, you know that a part of this chemistry class will be up on my YouTube channel. But I'll also be trying to post other things as well for all you CSEC and CAP students that need help with your SBAs or answering past paper questions because, you know, I got you. So forever and always, you know, Young Genius is always committed to excellence. Come unlock your inner genius with me. Bye, guys. Until next time. That was a mouthful. Oh, my God. He's the best.